Good morning. So I have a secret to share. We're all ears now, huh? There's something irresistible about a secret. That it's tantalizing. And your curiosity goes through the roof. That you need to know more. More than you need anything else in the world. That a quick search can find plenty of blogs and articles like the five secrets to growing your business, the three secrets of effective communication, the number one secret to losing weight, or even more broadly, the secret to raising smart kids, the secret to never fighting with your spouse, the secret to a perfect family, we want to know. Just the word secret gets our attention, increases our desire to know. So why do we keep secrets? There's lots of reasons. We keep secrets because they contain sensitive information that we're not comfortable sharing. Or even more basically, information that is nobody else's business. Sometimes it's just prudent to keep a secret. You keep something a secret because it's not yet time to reveal it. When a couple finds out that they're having a baby, they usually keep that information a secret until the pregnancy develops. And it just seems wiser. Changing jobs or moving to a new house, selecting a school, these are things we keep quiet until the proper time after plans are well established. So why do we reveal our secrets? We reveal secrets because we want someone else to know us, to know our hearts. We need to share our story with others, including our struggles and fears, our hopes and our dreams. So who do you reveal a secret to? Well, obviously, you reveal a secret to someone who is willing to listen and good at listening. But also, you reveal a secret to someone who will keep your secret, who you believe you can trust and be vulnerable with, who is for you, who will treasure and protect you, who can help you with it if necessary. That God has secrets. Perhaps you've never considered that before, but it's perfectly true, and nothing could be clearer in Scripture. Jesus says as much in today's Gospel reading. He says, The Son of Man will come with great power and glory, but you do not know when that time will come. God has secrets. Sometimes he hides these secrets, it's true. But here's the thing, he hides them for you and not from you. He hides secrets for you to encourage you to care about them, to search for them, to find them, to learn them, and to know them. Why? Because he knows how the human mind works. One of your frustrations with God might be, why doesn't God just tell me the answer? Why doesn't he just tell me what school to choose? Why doesn't he just tell me what job to pursue? Why doesn't he just tell me who I'll marry or how to handle my kids? God could tell you, you're right, he could. But God knows that when the tension is resolved, when the mystery is solved, you'll be a lot less likely to seek him and seek his wisdom. He knows that if he just gives you all the information about everything up front, it might appear unimportant, it might fail to interest or engage you. God knows that more than his answers, you need him. You need to engage with him. So God in his wisdom keeps secrets for you. 
On the other hand, there are some secrets he does share. At one point, Jesus told his disciples as much. The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. God keeps secrets for you, and he has secrets for you. Secrets he wants to share with you. Secrets about what he's doing in the world. Yet another place in scripture was the prophet Amos who shared this insight. Surely the Lord does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. We sometimes think of prophets as great and mighty heroes of the Old Testament with superpowers and supercharged mighty messages from the Almighty. It's all true, but prophets are even more. Prophets are trusted with God's secrets. Prophets listen to God and connect with his heart, his dreams, his designs for the future. God acts in the world. He acts in your world, in your community, and in your family. But before he acts, he lets his prophets know what he's doing. And he invites us to be part of these plans. Think about it. When God came into history that first Christmas, when he came in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, he came quietly. Most of the world didn't even notice. And he revealed his plans secretly to the main characters we associate with the Christmas story. Elizabeth, Mary, Joseph, the wise men, and the shepherds. God chose to reveal his plans to them quietly and secretly. And he did it in different ways depending on the circumstances and the information that he was sharing. He reveals it to them so that they can know what he's doing and partner with them in the unique roles he gives to each of them. To the central figure of the story, Mary, he reveals the heart of the secret, and he does it in a spectacular way, through the message of an angel. He sends Gabriel to tell her that she has found favor with God. And since since she has found favor, she will bear a child who will be the savior of the world. That was God's plan for Mary. But before Mary could be a part of that plan, she had to be brought into the secret. God had to give her knowledge and information about the secret. Without it, she could hardly have participated with God. Joseph is let in on the secret in a different way. While an angel appears to Mary, God reveals his secret to Joseph in a dream. Actually, two dreams. Like Mary, it was critical that Joseph understood the secret. Perhaps more so, because in Joseph's case, As events began to unfold, he was ready to walk away from playing any kind of role in God's plan. The shepherds learn about the secret not just from one angel, but from a whole chorus of them. And the wise men are given a spectacular star to follow. Meanwhile, Elizabeth comes to an understanding of God's secret in a way we might more easily appreciate and understand. She enters into the secret through prayer. And in prayer, she experiences the grace of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Scripture tells us she was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in this grace, she recognizes and understands what God is up to. They're models for us to follow. They show us the kind of relationship God wants to have with us. God is alive and active in our world. He has a plan for the well-being of your family, your business, your community, and you personally. God has a plan for us here at St. Peter. 
God wants us to worship here and also to nourish, nurture friendships here, to begin to build his kingdom here on earth in anticipation of heaven. So over the course of this series and during this season of Advent, I invite you to make two commitments. First, commit to being part of the series by joining us in the weeks ahead here in church or online. And secondly, commit to a daily prayer time, a daily quiet time, of only five or six minutes a day. In just a few minutes a day, you can begin what Jesus told us to do all the time. And the church invites us to do, especially at this time, during the season of Advent, to be watchful and be alert. Be watchful and on alert because God wants to speak to you. So watch this week for a time when God is going to talk to you and share with you his secrets for what he wants for you this Christmas and in the upcoming year. We're working to become people God can share his secrets with.